Hello dear student, this is Dr. Sai from Delta Bias, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBDA data and AFK exam. Please like and subscribe to my channel on YouTube and follow me on Facebook, Insta, TikTok and LinkedIn. Please do visit my website at dentabest.com where I'm offering several personalized and self-study smart learning program at a very affordable cost for all my hardworking students. So today we are going to take a topic of pediatrics. Spatial healthcare needs in children. It's a very important topic of the exam because we should know clinically how to manage these children who have spatial needs. So we have different cases like you can get a case of autism, uh, ADHD children, children with leukemia, uh, hemophiliac, uh, then your Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, autism. So there are some of these uh, important conditions that can always be asked in the exam. So the first case we have here is of the leukemia. So for a leukemic patient in your dental office, how you manage? So children, they have what is called as ALL. ALL is the childhood leukemia. This is one of the most common pediatric cancer. But the best thing is that it is very responsive to therapy. So children have very high chances to get completely cured. Now what is happening in leukemias, which are the blood cancer, your entire bone marrow it get replaced by immature WBC, which are multiplying millions of times more than the normal numbers. So since your bone marrow is making all the blood cell, if it get occupied by all the immature WBC there, now bone marrow doesn't have place to make new RBC or normal WBC or normal platelets. So what is happening in these children because of less RBC, they are anemic, they get fatigued, pallor, weight loss, bruising, bleeding tendencies. Why? Because their platelets, normal platelets are also reduced, so they have more bleeding. And whenever you have any bleeding tendency, the oral manifestation you mainly see on the gingiva and the heart palate, where you can see gingival bleeding, oozing, pitiches, which are the pinpoint hemorrhages can be seen in the palate, formation of hematoma, a big blood clot, ecchymosis, which are deeper bleeding in the subcutaneous tissue, which are also called as the bruises. Oral ulcerations, chance of infections are higher. Why? Because their normal WBCs, they are also decreasing and they have more chance of infection. So, since they are immunocompromised children, they have more chance of candidal fungal infection, which is an apostolistic infection. And the leukemic children, you are going to treat with the nystatin rinses, which is the antifungal rinse to treat the candidiasis. Now, the next uh, type of situation which we can see in a dental office is a child with autism, which is actually called as ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder. So, autism is actually a complex developmental disability that usually appears in the first three years of life. Now, why the autism actually happened, the exact etiology is still unknown but is known to be caused by the combination of the genetic as well as the environmental factor. Now, how you manage an autistic child in your dental office, that's the main thing. So, the first thing is that to make the child very comfortable in your dental office, that's very important. Let the child get his favorite toy in the dental office, that gives him more comfort. Now, autistic children, they're very sensitive to touch, light, sound, so you have to keep all this stimulus to minimum in them along with positive reinforcement means some reward system so if they are sitting quietly on the dental chair you're going to reward them with a sticker that works very good with them and to do the psd which is tell show do so tell show do is one of the most successful behavioral management technique that we have for children of all the ages for the patients of all the ages all cooperation level tell show do can always be done when you tell about the procedure show it and then actually perform it. So that is going to reduce the anxiety because it will make the patient more familiar with the procedure. It's not something new to him. Children with autism, since they will have some level of oral health neglect, so they will have higher risk of caries and also gingivitis due to bad oral hygiene. In autism children, nitrous, can be contraindicated because the main problem overall in autism children, what happens, they have difficulty to communicate. So if you're giving them nitrous and the nitrous becomes uncomfortable for them, they cannot even tell you 
that uh, if it is causing any problem to them. So, nitrous is considered to be a relative contraindication. It definitely depends upon what spectrum of autism the patient lies in. Okay, so now the next condition we have is ADHD. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. So, it's a developmental behavioral disorder where the attention span of the child is shorter as compared to other children in the same age group. So, since the child has difficulty paying attention, he is going to have a poor school performance. He has difficulty focusing, concentrating on any task. So, for managing the ADHD children, it is best to give them a short appointment because their attention span is very short. So, short mid-morning appointment, it works best after they have taken their breakfast and medication, right? So for ADHD children, we use what are called as amphetamine salts like Ritalin, Concerta, Focaline are some of the great names. And best thing to keep their attention on your procedure, involve them in your procedure, like let them uh, hold the suction for you. So, more the attention, focus they are keeping, in your procedure, it will be easier for you to treat them. So, the next condition we have is the Down syndrome. So, Down syndrome is actually a genetic disorder which is caused by chromosomal abnormality trisomy at chromosome number 21. So, a child with Down syndrome will have the features of having flat skull, slanting eyes, thickened or fissured tongue, broad hand feet and potential heart defects. So, around 40% uh, of Down syndrome children, they have congenital heart defects. Down syndrome children, since they are immunocompromised, they have more chance of developing uh, uh, conditions. Down syndrome children, they have more risk of developing leukemia at an early age, along with development of Alzheimer's disease and the hearing loss. Now, the oral manifestation, which is the most important, we should know that how this disease manifests orally so that you can diagnose it in your dental office. So, children with Down syndrome usually have class 3, prognathic mandible, a big size mandible. They can have torodontism. A torodontism can be seen uh, radiographically, where you have vertically elongated pulp chamber, also called as a bull teeth, a fissure tongue and a large size tongue, actually, which is called as macroglossia. So, patients with the Down syndrome are immunocompromised. So, they may require antibiotic pre-medication uh, before you do the treatment on them because there is high chances they have the congenital heart defect and you want to reduce the chances of subacute bacterial endocarditis. Also, in children with Down syndrome, avoid air polishes, prophies, uh, because use of prophies or ultrasonic scalers develop aerosols and the aerosols have bacteria that can infect them and using positive reinforcement. So, Down syndrome children, they are very affectionate, they are very family. So, once they get familiarized with you, with your office, they are likely to cooperate with you better than a normal child. Now, when we talk about a child with cystic fibrosis, so cystic fibrosis is actually the most common genetic disorder that we see in white American children. So, cystic fibrosis mainly there are three parts of your body that are affected. First is the sweat glands, then your respiratory system, the lungs and the pancreatic gland. So, you have more chance of lung infections here in the cystic fibrosis will lead to persistent coughing, pneumonia, wheezing and due to uh, effect in the pancreatic gland, the pancreatic lipase enzyme, the 5 digesting enzyme is deficient here. So, these children they cannot digest and absorb the fat properly. So, they have a poor weight gain and having bulky stool, a condition called as titoria when the fat comes out in the stool. So, the most important test that you do for cystic fibrosis, it is called as a sweat chloride test when you have increased levels of sodium and chloride in the sweat. The treatment of cystic fibrosis by using the tetracyclines which are used for treating the lung infections. But the problem with the tetracycline, as we know, it can lead to teeth staining effect if you use in the time period when the teeth are still getting calcified until age 8. Once all the teeth are calcified, after that you give tetracycline, it's not going to affect or stain the teeth. Now, the next condition we have is ectodermal dysplasia. So, if you can see the panel here and you can see the teeth are very few here, right? That is what is called as the oligodontia or hypotonsia when several teeth are missing here. 
So again, ectodermal dysplasia is a genetic disorder where mainly the ectodermal derivatives of your body are affected, which includes your teeth, sweat glands, hair, nails. So if you see the ectodermal dysplasia child, he has a depressed or flat bridge of nose and salivary glands are affected, right? So they will have more chances of caries because they have developed xerostomia. They have congenitally missing permanent teeth and uh, that is anodontia or oligodontia. So anodontia is when 2 to 6 teeth are missing. Um, so anodontia is when completely all the teeth are missing. Then you have oligodontia when multiple teeth, more than 6 teeth when they are missing is oligodontia and when you have 2 to 6 teeth missing that is called as the hypodontia. Again, because of absence of sweat gland, they have absence of sweating. So they cannot control their body temperature properly. You need to keep them cool all the time in a cool environment. Hypotrichocosis is the absence of the hair on the body or very reduced hair. They can have retained primary teeth with a permanent not being erupted. So management of acrodermal dysplasia children, basically if you can see there are many teeth which are missing, you have to give them dentures like a complete denture or the RPD. But when the child is growing, this denture is going to become loose with the growth of the jaws. So you have to replace them more often. Now the another condition we have is cleidocranial dysplasia. So many times students get confused between acrodermal and cleidocranial dysplasia which are completely two different conditions. So, cleidocranial dysplasia is also a genetic disorder and here mainly the cartilage is affected. So, the collarbone or the clavicle is absent or incompletely formed. So, these children, they can basically bring their shoulder bones together. Protruding jaw, they have a class 3 with a big size mandible, wide nasal bridge and the dental abnormalities, you can see multiple teeth and if you look at this panel closely, there are multiple supernumerary multiple era, unerupted supernumerary teeth which are seen here. Delayed permanent teeth are erupt late and deciduous teeth can be prolonged retained. Peck shaped and many teeth can be congenitally missing here. Now there is one more very serious condition that can arise in children is the type 1 diabetes mellitus which is also called as juvenile diabetes. So in children, if they have diabetes, there is something is they have deficiency of insulin because their pancreas, that part of pancreas, the beta cells of islet of Langerhans cells in the pancreas, if they get destroyed, it's not going to produce enough insulin. So there's a deficiency of insulin. So basically the blood glucose levels will be higher and these children need to take insulin shots every day. So uncontrolled type 1 diabetes is a potentially a very serious situation because it can lead to what is called as diabetic ketoacidosis that can lead to coma and death of the patient. Also, these patients can develop blindness and very high chances of developing infections because diabetic patients are immunocompromised. Along with that, they have xerostomia and due to less immune, they have poor healing tendencies and increased incidence and severity of the perio disease along with burning tongue or burning mouth syndrome. Now another condition that we can see here is the Apert syndrome. So Apert syndrome is a genetic defect with the cranial limb anomalies. As you can see the picture of the child here. In Apert syndrome, you are going to have supernumerary teeth that will disturb the eruption of other normal teeth, severe crowding, and the patient has a class 3 malocclusion that's a prognathic, a big size mandible. Along with that, in Apert syndrome, you have prematurely fused cranial sutures that is called as diastosis and retruded mid-face appearance. 